everyone, welcome to my channel. So in this video I'm going to be doing a colored pencil tutorial and the tutorial is going to be um, how you can draw these matte red lips. So it's kind of a holiday themed drawing, sort of. I did want to do a few colored pencil tutorials this month because I haven't done any in a really long time. So this is the one I'm going to be doing. And paper wise, I'm going to be using Strathmore Bristol Smooth Paper because it's the smoothest paper that I own and when you're drawing something like a mouth or lips, it's probably best to be using a smooth surface paper so that it's easy to um, lay down the color. So that's the paper that I'm going to be using. So I'm going to be using the Faber-Castell Polychromos pencils and these are the pencils that I'm using. I'll probably list the exact colors in the description box so that you can see them. The very first thing I always do is use a kneaded eraser to lightly erase some of my pencil lines. So my sketch that I did in graphite just so that I don't have an issue with graphite showing through at the end. I'm taking a dark red Polychromos pencil and I think the color is actually called dark red but I'm using that dark red pencil to mark in where the creases are first on the upper lip um, but the important thing to remember is to not actually press hard at this stage because it's the first layer that you're doing. I just like to mark in where the darker areas like the shadowed areas are in drawings because it helps to create an outline for the rest of the drawing. So that is why I'm doing the creases first. Fill in the dark areas inside the mouth. I'm actually using the color sepia first because even though it's black in my reference photo, I want to use sepia in case I make any mistakes and also just because I can use it a little bit on the shadows um, around the lips too, like in the corners, whereas using a black pencil might be a little bit too harsh to begin with. But I am going to go back later with the black pencil and go over those um, dark areas in the mouth. The next thing that I'm doing is going in with my dark red colored pencil again and filling in the creases on the bottom lip and I'm being very careful to make sure that I'm following the correct direction that the creases are moving in. I'm also using a light to medium hand so I don't want to put too much pressure on the paper yet and I'm just filling in where those darker shadows are going to go. It's important to get the direction right so that it looks accurate and it doesn't look like a bunch of straight lines because that's not going to look realistic because lips definitely have some bumps if you look close up and that's kind of what I'm getting at the bottom part of the upper lip. And I'm also using the dark red pencil to lightly shade in where my darkest shadows are going to end up going. So I'm not using very hard pressure at this stage yet, but that is what I'm doing. So I picked out a very light shade of pink to use as like um, a light underlayer color. So I do like to do underlayers in my work and in this particular piece it's not going to show um, through too much at the end, but I still think that it helps to create depth if you do some underlayers. So that's what I'm using this pink for. And I'm kind of looking at the photo and looking for the lighter regions and that's where I'm filling in the pink. I'm also going to be using this pink at the end to create a little bit of like, I don't know what to call it, but to create a little bit around the edge of the lips to make it look softer. I'm gonna color a little bit of pink around the edges so that it's not just super harsh edges. I have a scarlet red color and then like a carmine red color, which is like a pinkish red, and I'm using those to start to fill in the mid-tones, but you notice I'm still not using a ton of pressure. It's still like a medium pressure. And I'm kind of working a lot in the areas where I've already done shadows because where you have a shadow, you kind of want to put a mid-tone there so that it doesn't look too harsh against the lightest portions. And that's what I'm doing first is looking for the darker and mid-toned areas and trying to fill those in. And I'm kind of alternating between using a scarlet red color and like the pinkish red color. So if you're using a different set besides polychromos, you can probably easily find colors that match that. But the reason I'm using a pinkish red as well is because I kind of want it to have a little bit more of like a, a cute look and I don't know, I just don't want it to be too, too red. I want it to be slightly, slightly pink, but not to the point where it looks like it's magenta or anything. Once you mark your like dark creases and shadows, midtones and highlights, it's really just a matter of building up the color. So I'm going in and adding more layers of the same colors um, and I'm trying to use a little bit more pressure when I'm doing my darkest shadows because I want those to be kind of intense in the end result. And also this is going to be a matted 
like a matte look. So since the lips are not going to be shiny, I'm not going to worry too much about making it look too shiny or glossy, which I might do another like glossy lip tutorial because originally I was thinking of making this one a glossy lip tutorial and then I kind of just liked how it looked matte so I continued with it um, and it ended up being a matte lip, which I like this as well, but definitely with a matte lip you don't want to create too much of a shine on your paper. So you don't want to use a white pencil and like go in on top and try and smooth and burnish it all out because it's going to create too much of a shiny look. So once I created my dark red shadows I realized that some portions needed to be darker and that's where I go in with like a dark brownish red color and sepia and I created those shadows on the inner corners of the lip which you don't want to do till like the last stages probably because you're not really sure how dark your drawing is going to be until you're getting close to the end of it. And I also went in with my black polychromos pencil on top of where I colored the inside of the mouth with sepia earlier and I'm just filling in that area black. I also noticed that some of the creases of the lip were becoming like less visible and harder to see once I built up shadow so um, don't be afraid to go back and go over those creases again and create the ones that you want to make bold like you can press harder and burnish more towards the end stages of the drawing. I'm also working like right to left in this particular drawing so I'm now starting to work on the left side of the bottom lip and doing the same methods that I did on the right side although this side won't take me as long because since this person is biting their lip there's more on the bottom right portion than on the left portion. I'm trying to be pretty careful around the edges of the lip. I don't want to go out of the lines and I also don't want to create a harsh line so you notice that the edges of the lips look kind of soft and more natural like around the outside of the lips and that's because I never once went in and did like a harsh line. So I'm coloring kind of just in circular motions and I'm trying to create like a straight, like I want it to be straight and I want it to look not like the colors are going out of the lines but at the same time I don't want to do any type of straight like harsh line because that's not going to look good. It's just going to look like it's outlined. I also went in with my light pink color again and very lightly and softly kind of went around the edges of the inner corner of the lip and wherever I saw in the reference photo that there was a little bit of pink and I created more of like a soft, um, not outline, but a little bit of a soft color around the lips and it's not very much, it's not super noticeable, but it helps create a little bit more of a realistic look. And in this particular piece, I'm not actually going to be coloring in the skin around the lips. So it's kind of just lips, like a mouth, lips and teeth on white paper. So I just want to make sure that it doesn't look too cartoony. I moved on to the upper portion of the lip and kind of realized that it's a lot darker in my reference photo than the bottom portion. So I did go in with like a dark reddish brown as well as that dark red color and also sepia in some areas to create the shadow on the upper lip but I'm also careful to preserve where the creases are. I don't want to blend them in too much with the shadow. I still want there to be a degree of detail there. So you can see I'm pushing a little bit harder with my pencil on parts of the upper lip because they are just so much more intense and darker. And then I'm using a lot of scarlet red um, on the top portion. So I don't remember, oh, like the Cupid's boat area. I'm using a lot of scarlet red and a little bit of the pinkish red color to create an intense look on the top portion. At the same time, I'm still making sure that my edges and outlines are soft and not too unrealistic and harsh. This dark red color from the Polychromo set is one of my favorite colors. It's so pretty and I'm using that a lot for the shadows, but sometimes when you're doing colored pencil work, you realize that the color you were going to use for some of your darkest shadows is actually not dark enough and you end up um, using a lot darker colors than you thought you were going to in the first place. Once I finished the upper lip, I decided to go down and use um, scarlet red to add more intensity to the bottom lip because the upper lip came out very intense and red and I realized it was a little bit lacking in the bottom lip and a little too pinkish and so I went in with the scarlet red and fixed that. And another equally important part is the actual teeth. So if your reference photo includes the teeth, you have to be sure to give that some time and attention as well because it's not as quick and easy as you would think. 
um, because teeth are obviously not just white. They reflect different colors and they have a little bit of like a grayish or a yellowish tint to them sometimes. So especially where there's going to be shadows like in those two teeth on the right side, I'm adding a lot of color because my reference photo shows that those teeth are heavily shadowed and they have a bit of a red tint to it as well. And then the top teeth, so the top middle teeth in the front are the ones that are a little bit trickier because they don't have a lot of intense shadows but I still don't want them to look flat. Um, so I'm being careful with that and I'm even using some pinks and purples to create the light reflecting off of the teeth. And this part is kind of fun. So um, also there's a lot of like dark brown shadows so don't be afraid to use dark brown in the teeth even though you would think teeth would be white but sometimes the lips create a shadow on the teeth that's actually quite dark so I want to make sure that I'm being accurate with that. Once I was satisfied with the colors on the teeth and the different shadows that's when I decided to go in with a white gel pen so you can use just any white like jelly roll pen and you can go in and create the highlights. And I'm not gonna be doing that on the lips because again, these lips are supposed to be like matte, so it's supposed to be like matted lipstick. So I'm just gonna go in with the white gel pen and create little highlights on the teeth to make them look shiny. And I'm just following my reference photo to see what shape I'm gonna make the little highlights. And at the very end, I go in with my pink pencil again and outline a little bit and create a soft look for the upper lip. So in some areas you can see that I've done that, in some areas I haven't because I don't want to create it around the entirety of the outside of the lips, but just where it looks like it's a little bit softer in the reference photo, and so that's where I'm adding a little bit of that pink color. This is the final result and how it turned out. I was really happy with it. I'm just removing the artist's tape that I used to keep the paper from moving around. But yeah, I really hope that this tutorial was helpful and that you guys enjoyed this video because I had a lot of fun making this and creating this drawing. And I'm excited to post another colored pencil tutorial because I haven't done uh, many lately and I haven't really posted many videos at all last month So I'm excited to make up for it more this month with a few hopefully like holiday themed fun videos So if you really enjoyed this tutorial, please comment below Let me know what you thought of it or if you think I should do um, Another like portrait face related tutorial with colored pencils or maybe something entirely different I'm not really sure what else I want to do I know that I want to do a hair tutorial like another hair tutorial this month but that's it for this video. I'm probably going to list the exact colors that I used from the Polychromos colored pencil set in the description in case you're wondering um, which exact colors I used in this drawing. But again, thank you so much for watching this video and let me know what you thought of it and I'll see you in the next video.